Today on the channel, we're doing a little experiment. Number one question that I'm asked about my Yoder is, hey, Jake, where was the damper setting? I see it time and time again in the comments. And today, I'm gonna show you exactly how that damper works. What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake, you're watching Rum and Cook. Today on the channel, we're gonna do a little experiment about the damper. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, for the Yoder YS series, you've got the 480 and you've got the 640. Now, the biggest difference is, is that one's bigger. However, the 640 also has a variable damper. It's this little lever here on the left and it adjusts in and out and adjusts the damper. So today, we're gonna show you exactly what happens as we move that. But before we can get into that, I gotta clean this baby up. Now I've got several cleaning videos on the channel, so I'm not gonna go into super detail with this. The one thing I'll tell you, you, see, you guys see me use these gloves for cooking. This is a little bit of a messy job. These are great to uh, clean things up. We're gonna give this a quick scrape. Not even gonna worry about the half rack. For those of you who aren't aware about the damper, here's what it is, right? We've got this guy right here. Now, right now, we are at the recommended Yoder position of five inches in from the right. And if we go and we look all the way out, we are at about 14 and a half inches, and they want you to go in five inches. So we're roughly nine and a half inches. And there's our default even settings. This should produce even heat. Now, as you go in, we move heat over to the left. As you pull the handle out, we move heat over to the right. And again, there's roughly where we are even cooked. So like the premise is, is if you're searing, you wanna have this in to get maximum heat over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up some probes and I'm gonna show you all the temperature readings. As you can see, it's time for me to re-season this guy. You just spray this with Pam or canola oil, let it run for a few hours at around 400 and all the rust will go away, no problem. And just like that, it's all together. Got our half rack in here today. We're gonna put some probes up here. Now all we have to do is put in some pellets and fire it up. And today, I'm just using some Bear Mountain bourbon barbecue pellets. Just so happens that's what I've got the most of. Now today, I'm gonna to run a 300. It's kind of a happy medium between grilling and smoking. We're gonna use that as a basis. We're gonna let this get the temperature for a good 20 minutes or so. And then I'll show you how I'm gonna set up the probes. So let me show you how I have this set up. Here I've got probe one and probe two from the built-in Yoder. We're in the middle, top and bottom, one, and two. Then I have my Thermalworks Smoke X4, and I have one and two. And then I have three and four down here. So one, two, three, four. Now I'm looking at six different spots. I decided to put some wood under there so we could get the air temperature. You can see here. And what we're trying to do is just try to make sure we get an accurate reading of the air temperature. I don't want a temp reading from the stainless steel because what will happen there is that's going to hold heat longer so it's not going to give me a true temperature. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wait probably about another 15 minutes and then I'm going to let it go. We're in the recommended Yoder setting right now. So I'll share the temperatures. I'm going to run them for an hour in one spot. I'll bring you back. We'll talk about the temperatures. Then I'll change it. I'll let it run for an hour and we'll do that one th third time and then we'll do a wrap up. So it's been an hour and a half. We let this guy get up the temperature, get heat soaked for about 30 minutes, and then ran it for an hour. Here's where we're at. Our pitch reading, 291 right now. And then if we look at our other probes, the, the one that's up here in the middle on the top shelf is reading 321 right now. And the one that's on the bottom shelf in the middle is reading 303. Then we go top shelf left at 296, 297, 330 which if you've been watching for a while, you know that 
This side is always going to be hot because that's where our exhaust is. Then we go across the bottom here. We're at uh, 292 point, well, 293 now, and this is 311. That's when we're running with the recommended settings. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, I guess we'll push it in and see what happens there. We'll try and shift the heat over here and we'll see how it reflected now. So a couple quick things to note. Number one, all pellet grills are going to have kind of this roller coaster effect where they're adding more pellets to bring up the temperature and they're slowing down to let the temperature come down. So I'm not sure where we are in the swing of this. I'm just going to walk out at the, the timing of hour, two hour, three hour, and it is what it is. Uh, the one thing I did forget to do is I taught you guys before when cleaning your Yoder, there is a built-in probe that's here on the left hand side. Uh, normally what I like to do is I like to take some stainless steel and clean it. It is black right now. I cleaned it not too long ago. Uh, but it's not perfectly clean and that usually causes it to read a little bit hotter but i don't want to change it now because we're in the middle of uh we're an hour in and i'm not going to wait another hour but that's going to have a little bit of an effect on our readings shouldn't too much because i did clean it recently but i just want to be transparent about that now what we're going to do is we're going to push the damper all the way in and then i'll bring you back in an hour and we'll see what happens to our temperatures then. One more hour down, let's have a look. So right now we're sitting at 307. The middle top is at 338. The middle bottom is at 318. Then we go 311, 320, 310, 322. Right now, our exhaust side is still running hotter. Uh, we have increased the temperatures here a little bit and I've noticed just as a general trend, it has run a little hotter. Like we've been, before we were 290 to 305, and now we're sticking more to like 298 to, to 310. So we have increased our temperatures a little bit. However, we're not seeing this side, you know, hotter than the other side. We are just bringing up the temperatures a little bit. Now what we'll do is we will pull this out and we'll wait one more hour and we'll see how it looks. So here we are at the end of three hours. Let's go over our numbers. Pit sitting at 298 right now. The top middle's at 326. The bottom middle is 311. And across our top here left is 302.7, so almost 303. 330, and then we go across the bottom. We're at 301 and we're at 315 on the right hand side. So what did we learn here? The damper has more of an effect on the left half of the grill than it does on the right hand side. And there's a pretty good reason for this, I think. What's happening here is all of our hot air is being circulated around and then it comes up over the top, heat rises. Then we hit a negative pressure zone and we're out the stack, right? If you see me do a brisket, you know that I always try and put my point there for uh, a good part of the, of the cook Closest to the stack, that's the hottest area, so that way we're kind of evening out our cook a little bit. But the one thing we learned is that, you know, on the right-hand side, we don't have as much of an impact. So, you know, when I was talking to a Yoder dealer about the 480 versus the 640, they told me it really comes down to size. Don't buy it for the, the adjustable damper. It doesn't have that much of an impact. And when you guys have asked me, I've told you flat out, 99% of the time, I don't touch it. I've left it at the five inch mark, since pretty much day one, although a couple of videos I have pushed it over to uh, just enhance the sear a little bit, but I knew that the impact wasn't that much. I just I never measured it before. So definitely interesting here. You know, the reason why I decided to go with the 640 is you can always put less food on your grill or your smoker, but once it gets full, it's full. All right, and I didn't want to run out of space. So that's why I went with the 640. The interesting thing that we learned here, and me most importantly, because now I've been corrected, is that the top has actually run hotter than the bottom. And, you know, I don't remember when, several years ago, I had some cooks that I just felt like they really, when I put the meat up top, it cooked a lot slower. And I just started thinking about it. I'm like, all right, well, we're further away from the heat. So that makes sense. It's just gonna be a little cooler. However, <laughs> I can't seem to prove that according to the thermometers. So I'm wrong. I'll admit it. I don't have a problem with saying that. Uh, but so, you know, doing a video like this is very interesting for me because in this case, I got to learn something. So, you know, I enjoy that. Hopefully you got some value out of this video too. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, 
please do so below. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you soon.